anyway, so the, the slaughterhouse. Uh, so yeah, there's an hackney extension, and it kind of is it it, it's something we worked on over the last, um, I think, about month. And it's about two hours worth of content, which is like, you know, doing two hours worth of content for a game is a lot, especially yeah. when you're working full time and doing it on the yeah, side. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of nuts. Um, and it's a one where you, in, in the game, you break into the computer system of a meat company that runs an abattoir. Uh -huh. And you, you're given missions by a collective um, who are trying to expose some of the problems with this particular meat company. So they look at um, environmental concerns, animal cruelty concerns, um, you know, even just concerns with you know food safety inspectors and you know, um, you know, employee employees and safety standards. A whole bunch of those kind of things are explored in this extension. And part of the um, the reason we wanted to make it is because. Uh, there's a particular kind of person who'll play a game like Hacknet. You know, a lot of that audience is a younger male um, audience that don't usually connect with some of the issues that we raise, you know, sure. about animal liberation or environmental concerns. Yep. You know, they're the same, you know, I don't want to stereotype here, but it's the same kind of crowd that will post pictures of bacon and be like, it's amazing, I love bacon, yeah, yeah. even though it's like a carcinogen, right? Sure. Um, yeah. And so we wanted to... Maybe I'll put it in the slang way. We wanted to give them those nerds a big vegan punch in the face. <laughs> and Fair enough. But 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 we but we wanted to do it in a way that was like serious um, and actually contained a lot of you know discussed a lot of the issues with abattoirs and beyond a whole bunch of the um, uh, the concerns with how animals are treated and just how you know inhumane a sort of house is. There are a whole bunch of other issues tied to. Um, tied to them as well like every kind of you know a lot of different social issues and things that we talk about you know actually come up there as well yep. and uh, we wanted to do it in a yeah in a space that had a different kind of audience to what we're used to and wouldn't usually be exposed to that stuff um, also just more generally because it's something we care about and because that stuff is really not represented in video games at all sure yeah yeah um, I mean there are a few games that do a little bits and pieces but it's not like the way in which a uh, a movement like feminism is represented in games. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we also wanted to make something because Matt's a friend, and I wanted to show him like how to make something really good with his own game. Because <laughs> that's, 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 that's a good way to. Do it. And, and, and actually, uh, that sounds that sounds really uh, snobbish and stuff, but I, <laughs> I mean, don't worry, I can justify that. No, that's fine. So, but like, but there's a so I'm I sure you know, uh, yeah, I mean, so in in, in Hacknet, right? Um, one of the way that game kind of plays out is that it feels very much like it's a, the papers please, you know, kind of of hacking, where the actual thing that you're doing from minute to minute is completely banal and boring. But the interesting thing about the game is the context that it's coached in. Yep. And it's the motivation there behind what you're doing, trying to forward. Yeah, and, and, and Hacknet touches up upon all that hacking stuff that's, you know, kind of interesting as well. And it gives people a bit of a taste about what's involved with, with hacking. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the problem that I that I have with the main set of games and the DLC labyrinth stuff is that it, it you end up doing a thing where you you don't you kind of bounce around a lot so you have a, a network of computers and you bounce around breaking into one looking at something you know breaking into another one grabbing something there removing a file editing something and I think for me the the interesting part is you know um, actually doing a bit of the investigative stuff so actually putting um, you know, describing a complex computer system and having the player figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, I felt that Hacknet didn't really do a great deal of that. It felt more as though, um, you know, here's, you know, here's a, you know, here's a door and we've given you four keys. Now just, you know, use the four keys, mm. which, which is really boring. Um, so we wanted to add a degree of like, um, complexity to that as well by making it that you'd have to delete you have to investigate stuff and try different things and, you know, do a lot of reading, uh, which is also something that that audience doesn't like to do as well. Mm. Um, yeah. And so, so, so you essentially almost tended into more of a text adventure, like an investigative sort of text adventure. Is that safe to say? Like, you know, looking at the clues for very specific sort of clues and things. Yeah. But I don't think we, we I don't think we go too far in that direction. Yeah. We do it enough that it, it like ventures away from the kind of general feel of the, the main game okay. but it, it's it, you know like it's not the same as the main game kind of stuff but it, it's got its own sensibilities to it okay. um, 
And yeah, it actually touches upon real issues as well, which is the other problem that I have with the main HackNet game, which is that a lot of hacking culture is very political. And uh, that game deliberately tried to avoid politics. Yeah. And as we know, you can't really do that. You can't opt out of politics. Uh, and, a, you know, and, that, and that that kind of mentality is also a similar mentality shared by the audience of that game, which is, oh, you know, we want games to be treated as art, but no politics in my game, please. So we wanted to kind of challenge on that side and bring some politics about it, especially in the last, you know, like 12 months or so, there's, you know, with WikiLeaks and with, uh, you know, presidential campaign and, you know, hacking political parties, um, with like Facebook and the way that Facebook is moderated, that area is so rich for that, you know, for this stuff. And something like Orwell uh, definitely touched upon that. I mean, that, that took the entire concept of, you know, sort of surveillance and things like that and how much data, you know, is collated from you from things like CCTV and Facebook and all sorts of other social networks and things too. Yeah, so yeah. I, I suppose we kind of felt like, like if... Um, you know, someone should address that stuff if, if Matt's not prepared to do that in the main game. Um, and that, that also comes about from a responsibility of, you know, that I feel that if you make something that gets... Well, if you put anything out into the world, right, you should think about the consequences of how that permeates into the culture. And that, you know, and if you have a really highly successful, successful game, you have an obligation to, to use that platform to further the good of community and the good of society. And to cover these things, um, and and just pretending that that you, you, know, doesn't, you know, that you shouldn't have politics in games and stuff it does not exist. Your game has some degree of politics. Sure. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. 